Explanation of the graph is an integral part in economics. It contains approximately 40% marks of every question you are asked for. That is the reason I'm making this video separately just to explain you how to write down the explanation of economics graphs such as demand, supply, or the shift graphs. Hello everyone, this is Shayan Siddiqui with you, an expert business and economics teacher, an educationalist, and a professional corporate trainer. Welcome to my channel. In this special lecture, I'm going to teach you how to write explanation of economics graph or interpret economics graph. The lecture is going to be in English language, so without further delay, we shall move toward our lecture. And these are the lesson objectives, how to interpret or explain economics graphs. Let's move on. I'm going to explain you how to explain economics graph in nine different steps. So step number one, the first thing is you have to explain the title of the graph. On and off it happens when I check the exam papers of different students, international students, I find out that students forget to write down the title of the graph, such as demand curve of mangoes, supply curve of wheat or something like that. So they just forget to write it down. Please don't forget to write it down. Once you have written down that title above the graph, then after you are expecting to write the same sentence again at the beginning of the explanation like this first sentence above is the demand curve of mangoes I'm now keeping the demand curves example as my example here which I will be using throughout the lecture and then at the end of the lesson I will be explaining you how to explain the supply curve and how to explain a shift of supply curve using different economic terminologies step number two you have to explain x-axis and y-axis both what have you taken on y-axis and what have you taken on x-axis so in second sentence you will be explaining we have taken price on y-axis because we always take price on y-axis which is denoted as p and quantity demanded on x-axis which is denoted as qtd and it ranges from 5 to 20 and the qtd ranges from 100 to 250 that's it that's what you have to explain when you are explaining the axes. Keep it in your mind if you are grade 9, 10, 11, 12 student or if you are taking foundations of economics even if you are a master's student and you are just studying the foundation of economics you must have to explain both of the axes in your explanation of the graph. Step number three you now have to explain the movement on y-axis first. Now how will you explain? There are three different sentences I have written and these are the most preferable sentences. It's not mandatory that you can only use these three. You can write your own but these are the most preferable. For example, the first one as the price moves away from the origin 5 to 10. What are you doing? You are explaining the movement on y-axis. The first step is you will explain the price is moving from 5 to 10. That's it. You don't have to explain anything else. Second way of explaining the same thing as the price moves upward. In the first one I wrote away from origin and second one I am saying upward. The third one over here I am saying as the price increases from 5 to 10. This is the simplest form of explaining the graph. Step number 4. Now you have to explain the x-axis, the horizontal axis and you are expected to explain the quantity demanded here. And again there are two different ways to explain. These are the most preferable ways. Number 1. The quantity demanded moves toward the origin. Keep it in your mind over here the quantity demanded is moving toward the origin. What is called an origin? Origin is the zero point zero point which you can see at that corner that is origin so the quantity demanded is moving toward the origin from 250 to 200 this is the fourth step now second way of explaining the same sentence quantity demanded was decreased from 250 to 200 that's it you don't have to write down the story there step number five again you have to explain the movement on y-axis but last time and now this time you will be be explaining the top point what is the top point you will be saying when the price reaches on top to 20 that's it or you can also say when the price touches the maximum point which is 20 dollar 
That's it. And then in six strap, you again have to explain its excess, but last time. What will you say here? You will say the quantity demanded was decreased to 100. Over there, you explain the last point, and over here, you are explaining the last point. So the, when the price was 20, the quantity demanded was 100. That's it. Or the second way of explaining the same sentence is the quantity demanded moved toward the origin till only 100 units. Keep it in your mind, do not write down the numbers only, must mention that you are explaining units and in price you are explaining dollars or the price or rupee, whatever it is. Step number seven, now you have to explain the relationship of both axes. How will you explain? You will say as evident that movement on y axis which is price is causing an inverse effect on x axis y axis the movement on y axis is causing the effect on x axis please do not write down that the movement on x axis is causing the effect on y axis it, it will be wrong okay so whenever the price moves away from the origin the quantity demanded moves toward the origin vice versa satris paribus that's it step number eight now explain the demand slope demand curve will be explained at the end do not explain it when you start your explanation so the inverse movement of both x and y axis is creating a downward sloping demand curve that's it step number nine now you have to justify the graph how will you justify the graph this shows the inverse relationship of price with quantity demanded whenever the price is increasing the quantity demand is decreased and the downward sloping curve is formed this is a complete explanation now I'm going to show you the complete explanation of this graph. Read it carefully and after this slide I'm going to tell you some serious mistakes that students do in their exam. So read it carefully. In the above graph we have taken price on y-axis denoted as P and quantity demanded on x-axis denoted as QTD. It's not mandatory that you have to only write down QTD. You can write down Q there, you can write down QD there, but do not write down the demand there only. So QTD is the most preferred one, which I learned. The price ranges from five to 20 and the quantity demanded ranges from 100 to 250. That's it. When the price was $5, the quantity demanded was 250 kgs mangoes. As the price increased from $5 to 10, the quantity demanded was decreased from 250 to 200 kgs of mangoes. When the price reached to the top $20, the quantity demanded was dropped to minimum 100 kgs only. And the downward sloping curve is formed. Now, paragraph change justification. Hence, it is clearly evident that there is a negative relationship between the price and quantity demanded. Whenever the price increases, the quantity demanded decreases, vice versa, satras paribus, and downward sloping curve is formed. That's it. That's how you have to explain. Now, the serious mistake which students do, it is here. Now, this is a page just for example, and what students do is students draw a graph at the corner and they explain it next to it, such as at the right side, they explain the graph that is totally wrong. Please don't do it. You will lose your grades. Approximately quarter of your page should be covered by graph. You must draw your graph this much big approximately. And this is the most preferable way to draw the graph. Graph on the top and then explanation beneath the graph. That's it. And approximately at least two paragraphs shall be used when you are explaining the graph. This is the most preferred one, but it's not mandatory that you must have to use two paragraphs. Now, how will you explain the supply graph? Okay, keep it in your mind. You have to use specific terminologies for a supply graph, for demand graph, for all different graphs. So I have explained in this video what terminologies you must use for demand graph, which I have already explained, what terminologies you must use for supply graph and for the shift of the demand graphs and supply. So here we go. 
that's how we will explain the supply graph instead of going step by step I have written down and I have highlighted a few points here if you read it with me you will be able to understand in the above graph we have taken price on y-axis denoted as P and quantity supplied on x-axis denoted as QTS now there is no specific change in the structure of the explanation but there is a serious change in the wordings which you see highlighted for example the quantity supplied on also increase from 100 to 150 kgs also increase if you go back you will be able to see that I'm explaining this graph in the supply the quantity supplied is increasing from 100 to 150 and that's what I explained here now see how did I explain I said when the price reached up to $15 QTS means quantity supplied also moved forward till 200 kgs and an upward sloping supply curve is formed. Demand was downward sloping, supply is upward sloping curve. Hence, it is clearly evident that there is a positive relationship between price and QTS. In demand, there was a negative relationship, but over here, there is a positive relationship. These are the words that you must use when you are explaining your graph. Now, how will you explain a shift of demand curve graph? What terminologies and the wordings you must use in that? If you haven't watched my video about shift of demand curve and supply and so on, I have given the links there in the description below and the link is there for the shift of demand curve. Go there and watch, but I did not explain how to explain the graph in that video. That's what I'm going to explain today. Now see, as you can see that there is no change in the price, but only there are the shifts of demand curve because there's a change in the surplus variables condition just imagine maybe the income of the consumer has been changed maybe there is a positive change in the income which is creating a positive effect on the quantity demanded of that product or there is a negative change in the income which is creating a negative effect on the quantity demanded of the product it is resulting in the shift of demand curves instead of movement of the price because the price is fixed twenty dollars how will we explain this condition this is how we will explain keep it in your mind d d1 d is the first one d1 is d1 is the condition when the income is increased and d2 is the condition when the income was decreased so the demand curve was shift at left side and that was a negative shift so how are we going to explain the shift of demand curve and here is the explanation of the shift of demand curve now I have used some specific words and terminologies which you must use when you are explaining the shift of demand curve now look at it and read it the above graph is about a shift of demand curve due to the change in one of the surplus paribus conditions change in one of the surplus paribus condition and what is the condition if you remember I just explained you I say there is a change in the income of consumer imagine the income was 5000 and income has increased from 5 to 7000 or decreased from 5 to 3000 that is the scenario on which you have written this explanation just read it we have taken price on y-axis denoted as P you already know that and demand on x-axis demand on x-axis not the quantity demanded demand on x-axis denoted as D as the income of the consumer has increased from 5,000 to 7,000 resulting the shift of demand curve to the right D1 imagine the income was increased the demand curve was shifted from D to D1 which is here as you can see when his income was 5,000 his demand was 300 when the income was increased from 5 to 7,000 the demand also moved from 300 to 400 and there's a shift of demand curve but there is no change in the price of the product let's continue here they are saying which shows that the demand of the product has increased from 300 to 400 at the same price $20 there is no change in price if you remember only the demand has has increased due to the change in the income so that's how we will explain we are linking everything back with the graph and we are not dragging around or writing down different stories which normally students do and they lose their grades so let's move on uh, the reduction in the income from 5,000 to 3,000 caused a shift of the demand curve to the left to the left terminology economics terminology you will use it and then you will explain what is the name of the new demand curve which moved toward the left that is d2 it's clearly written here which you can see at the bottom 
and the demand of the product has reduced from 200 to 100 that's it this is a complete explanation of the shift of demand curve now some important exam tips please do not do this mistake normally students do it what is the mistake for example if they are asked to draw more than one or two graphs there in the question they re-explain everything from point a such as as we have taken price on x-axis quantity demanded on y-axis and so on you don't have to explain it again again and again okay if you have explained in one graph that is more than enough that's it now you have to directly jump on the main point as you can see that there is a inverse relation or there is a positive relationship between x-axis and y-axis and the downward sloping demand curve or upward sloping supply curve or there is a shift of supply curve that's it that's what you have to explain and you have to justify the graph you don't have to re-explain everything from point a for every graph you are drawing you don't have to do it second thing please do not draw the graphs without using your ruler or the pencil or using the ink pen please don't do this mistakes normally students do it and they lose their grade this was a lecture on how to explain or interpret economics graph I hope you have understood this lecture and I covered several other things how to explain different economics graph. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so and if you have already subscribed to it, thank you so much but please refer my channel to others so that they can also benefit from my lectures. Thank you so much for watching.